I've got a bit of a mad idea. What's that? Should we take that out in the alley? What, a scooter? All right, Bev, I've been waiting to hear something. Is he OK? No, no, he's not. Darling, are you sitting down? I need to know what he's like now. You know what he's like? No, no I don't. I, I never wanted to know. I, I know he's in a wheelchair, but, 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 but that's it. I'm his He needs you now. This isn't about you, Shane. This is about Oliver, and you've got to get your act together and go and see him. Shane! So welcome, Sean. Thanks for coming to see us today to That's talk right. about your project. So your partner is a looked-after children's nurse here at Oxley's, isn't she? Yes, yes, that's right. And it was right. her idea that you come along and have a chat to us about a really interesting project that's underway at, mo at the moment. Yes, It's It's gathering quite a lot of interest nationally. Mm -hmm. So you've written about your life and your story, and it's been made into a pilot, and the interest is gathering. So can we start by just you telling us a little bit about yourself? OK. Um, so... You know, normal childhood, happy childhood, um, two older brothers, you know, um, all, all, you know, perfectly normal. Um, very confident child, um, very confident teenager. Um, didn't do that great at school because I had distractions. Um, always, you know, I always wanted to sort of chase the girls rather than sort of sit down and do work or my homework. Um, and basically, yeah, just left school. Um, went to college to reset my GCSEs um, and everyone was you know, sort of very proud of the fact that I was doing that um, and after two weeks got kicked out of college and pretended for the rest of the year that I was going to college every day um, but really I was just going around my mate's house who at the time had a broken leg so we were just going around there and just playing the computer all day so come the end of the year um, you know, mum's asking when when my exams are, make sure you're revising, you're revising, you know, kept on. And um, sort of stress, quite a lot of stress come with that because I was thinking, you know, what am I going to do? Decided to pay to take the exams up up in London. Um, Travelled up there to take them. Sat down with my exam paper and pretty much just written my name. And I didn't have a clue what I was doing. And I haven't done anything since school. So... Yeah, there was uh, a lot of stress and anxiety, really, which I'd never suffered before. And, you know, at that age, I was about 18, just 18. And through that stress and anxiety, I started losing chunks of my hair, um, which was absolutely... I can't even tell you how terrifying it was um, just to sort of go in the shower and come out and just, like, clumps of hair in my hand. And I didn't know how to deal with it at all. Um, really hit me hard. And so from the age of about 18, I started becoming very low. Confidence drained out of me in like a week or two. Every time I stepped foot, stepped foot outside the house, um, you know, it, it, it knocked me for six, really. To so that was the start then of, of a kind of an escalation? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and then sort of depression set in. And, you know, thankfully, you know, I was... Because I was obviously at home, I'd say to mum, you know, she knew about the college thing. She, and at the time, she wasn't bothered. She was like, you know, it's no point upsetting yourself. There's no point getting in such a state over it. All it is is, you know, it doesn't matter. In grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter. There's no point, you know, risking your health for it. And, but yeah, it just, it opened up a can of worms, really. And my hair thing just started, carried on. And I'd always had a lot, a lot of attention on, on me um, from sort of girls and all that sort of thing because my hair was like really blonde and curly and, and all the rest of it. And yeah, um, it just, I went to the doctors and they said, you know, you've got manic depression and it just went, went from there really. Right. And that's something that stayed with you for some years. So without giving too much away mm. about the pilot that you've got underway for a drama series, it's basically, it's based on your life. You've written your experience of this and how it progressed. Yeah, I mean, I've 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 changed um, bits of the story. Um, just be, I've, I've changed little bits in the story to make it a little bit more appealing and interesting to the audience. Um, but yeah, I w the main thing that I want to get through 
is how depression and mental health, but depression in general, um, can absolutely ruin a person. Um, just completely bring you down to your knees and worse if you let that happen. Um, I know everyone all says, you know, got to talk to someone, got to talk to someone, and it's becoming more and more popular now. Um, thank God, you know, but it's, I want to show how that affects not just the individual, but how it affects their family and their parents and how they can't do anything. And they've just got to stand there and witness what's happening to someone, knowing they can't, you know, they can't go in and take over and just take that pain away. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things as well. Uh, a lot of people, there's the whole like sort of man up, and but it's a completely different element to just feeling a little bit low or feeling a little bit down, or you know it's a completely different. It's it's the one thing that act, absolutely terrifies me in life, um, that of getting sort of depression or anxiety and that sort of thing. But yeah, absolutely terrifying. So what I want to get across is just how important important it is, but the actual damage and. That you can do to a person. Oh man, the checkout is so rude. Shane? Yeah, sorry. Anyway, I got ham and eggs, so do you fancy ham, egg, and chips? No, I'm, I'm alright, thanks. What have you eaten today? I haven't seen you have breakfast all night. No, um, but I'm fine. You had a row with Louise? What? No, not together. Something's wrong. You've been very quiet. Are you going to tell me? So the pilot that you've made, as I said earlier, is, is gathering lots of attention, but it's mm. also be, it's won an award, hasn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, well, I, I'll tell you how that came about. Because um, when I started to get the process going, uh, I won't talk too much about it at the moment, but w what, how I got the process going, I, I got in touch with a, a small production company. Um, because I didn't have any sort of budget, I said, look, I, I can't pay any sort of budget. And they said, well, that's OK. We make short films. So if you're okay with us to put this on our website and send it out to sort of competitions and that sort of thing, we'll happily film it for free. Um, so I didn't even know they sent it out to these award companies. I didn't even wasn't even aware of it until he, uh, one of the, the guy who directed it, who was part of the production team, he uh, sent me a message and said, oh, by the way, it's just one best drama at European Film Festival. Um, absolutely over the moon obviously, um, and I didn't even have to do anything. <laughs> so he done all the work for me there. So yeah, very, very chuffed. That's unbelievable. So that's now spurred you on to, and so what are your aims for the film now? You want to get this made into a... Yeah, I mean, I always said to them, you know, you can use it as a short film, that's fine. Use the pilot as a short film. I'm using the pilot to highlight, it's a highlighted version of an actual pilot. So it's half an hour long. I'm using that to send out to production companies. Um, obviously, there's a script to go with it. Um, send it out to as many people as I can, generate interest, gain some momentum, and hopefully get picked up um, for to make a drama series, to make a free series drama. Well, hopefully we can be part of that as well, so we can yeah, share. Hopefully, yeah. Share the pilot and get it out there. Absolutely, yeah. Because it's a fantastic story, and I'm sure that it would be a lot of help to a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, you know, because there's a lot of people that go through similar things, but just don't know where to turn. No, that's it. I mean, one of the important things people always say is, is, is talk to someone, make sure you talk to people, talk to people. You've got to talk to the right people. Because if you're talking to someone who's never experienced it, never gone through it, and you, t and you say, look, I'm really struggling, they're like, all right, okay, what's, what's wrong then? And you say, well, this, that, and the other. And they're like, well, oh, just, you know, just don't snap out of it. You know, just, just, just go and do something else. Just, it's not as easy as that. You have to talk to someone who's been through that, um, and experience that kind of low to pull you out of that. Um, you know, I mean, honest to God, if, for example, I hadn't, um, at the age of 18, gone and seen someone or spoke to my family about it and actually gone to the doctors, I wouldn't be sitting in there. I would have killed myself long, long ago. Um, purely because of how like, evil this devil inside your head is. Um, yeah, I would, there's no way I would have been able to, to crack on. And, and do what I've done. I need to know what he's like now. You know what he's like? No, no I don't. I, I never wanted to know. I, I know he's in a wheelchair, but, but, but that's it, yeah? He's different now. 
and he's lost a lot of weight and he's got a tube in his throat but look he's still the same Oliver he's always been okay I'll just I'll just shake his hand and have a quick chat because people want to talk to him but you're not going to be able to shake his hand Shane he can't move his hands he can move his eyes and his mouth but that's about it I didn't know that so when you were writing the film, the character who is Shane, mm -hmm. he's playing you. Mm -hmm. So did you have to, what did you have to do to prepare him to be able to play you? Well, the first time I spoke to him on the phone, I knew that I wanted him. He had that right look um, of how I used to look um, and he had the, the right sort of attitude and the sort of the cockiness that I wanted um, because it's, it's very important that he's cocky at the beginning because that's how I used to be I did used to be quite cocky and arrogant and I want the audience to be able to see that change in him going from cocky arrogant but lovable um, to just a complete shell of 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 who he, who he who he was so I you know I, I explained this to him come for the audition got the part and I said like this is a really important role this is how you need to play it um, and I invited him around to, to dinner uh, one night me and my partner sort of done him steak and chips and I sat down with him afterwards and went for a scene um, that's pivotal in in the in the pilot because um, I said look if this is going to get picked up it's going to get picked up because of this scene so this is what I want to do I want to go through it with you and he was going to play it completely different um, and you know not taking anything away from him he's a fantastic actor um, but it needed to be played a certain way of how I would have been and how I would have reacted and how my emotions would have been. Um, so yeah, I went through it with him, um, done a bit of coaching with him. I was, I, I, I sort of rung him several times throughout the production, just to say, I'll do this, do this, remember to do this. Um, even there's a scene when he's on the phone, um, there's a scene when he's on the phone and he was like dead silent, but his face expression was different. And I just went like that, waved from behind the camera, his eyes looked at me and I just like went, because I wanted him to, his mouth to be open at that point, and he just like went <laughs> and carried on. Um, but just things like that, I was always on hand for all the actors to, because to, to you know the director obviously directed the the, the pilot um, and done a fantastic job. It's a really good team around us. Um, but because it's me and it's my story and it's sort of people I know, I wanted it done a certain way. So I was always made sure that I was on hand to talk to the actors and how I wanted certain things to be done. So we mentioned the authenticity of the of the pilot, so it's, it's very authentic and that really comes across. Mm. So particularly the language, we noticed, you know, the, the language that was used by the teenagers was what you'd expect, really. Yeah, that's exactly it. It's what you'd expect. It's real life, like it or not, that's the way people talk. Um, you know, and I, I wanted, I'm, I'm, big fan of sort of realism um, like um, I'm a big fan of sort of Shane Meadows and this is England sort of series and the way that goes from one minute you're up and laughing and the next minute you're down and the, there's colourful language in that just because that's the way people are um, you know there's meant no offence by it it's just life and you know and I just wanted to make it as authentic as I possibly could yeah, and it definitely is. So, what are the next? What are the next steps? So, what's happening with the with the pilot next? Well, it's going well. Hopefully, what I'm going to be doing very soon is hiring out a um, sort of cinema um, in the local area, just inviting the cast, inviting the crew, everyone who's involved in to f see the finished article because. Bless them, it's been like nearly a year now, they haven't seen the finished article and they're all very excited to see it. But plus I'm going to be inviting sort of some producers and that sort of thing down um, to, to come and see it. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it will be picked up professionally and created and made into a series. Um, but also it will be available to the public straight after that. Um, but yeah, just watch, it, watch this space and hopefully everyone will be able to see it as soon as possible. But for our staff here at Oxley's, we get a special sneak preview on our Yeah, internet. you can have a little look at it. I'll, oh, let, you, I'll let you have a little look at it, that's fine. <laughs> Lovely, thanks very much. No, no problem at all.